um, piece of fabric I hand painted. Now, if you want to know how it's done, if you revert back to the first show last night, we've got all the basic um, tips and techniques of how to um, paint fabric um, with uh, multi-surface paint, which is permanent uh, to go through the laundry. If you heat press it, it's permanent. You can put it through the laundry and it means your image isn't going to come off. It, um, the, the demonstration last night is also quite uh, specific as to what inks you're going to use. So uh, we use Versacraft, which is a, a specific water-based fabric pigment, but you can use it on papers as well. So it's not just a one trick pony. Um, and you can stamp it on top of your fabrics and put it through the washing machine. Um, which is just brilliant. So this particular piece would be uh, a cushion cover. Um, now to start with, I've already got my background in and what I'm going to do for this demo is actually paint the robin, which is going to sort of hang from one of these little um, scrolls here. Um, now these scrolls all go round in a circle. To get my circle dead straight, all I did was put a pudding bowl in okay. the centre. Would that have been a Christmas pudding bowl? Of course it was a Christmas pudding bowl. <laughs> I'm glad that you're keeping yeah. the thing going. But the little mice had eaten the mince pies that were sitting Ooh, in the bowl. The little blinders, I don't know, <laughs> cheeky little things. <laughs> right, so, so what I did was I had my pudding bowl and then my stamp I had right up as near to the edge of my platform as I could get it. And then I put my platform to the edge of the bowl and I stamped three o'clock. I inked it up again, uh, six o'clock nine o'clock let me guess the last one 12, 12 o'clock <laughs> hey so you've got your quarters in <laughs> then i by eye just did the midway one so okay. there's no measuring yeah so i then did these four lovely and then basically any space that was left i then flipped my stamp and then filled in all the gaps so actually some are a little bit closer than others but when you look at it you actually just see it as a whole you, do, you don't yeah. sort of I mean look at the gap there as opposed to the gap there um, so but like you say when you're looking at the overall image you don't know no it, you no. don't um, and then what I've done is I've put some snowflakes in the middle some little bits and I've used white paint and the Mel has gone in um, with her uh, Schwarkowski again and um, put those in. They're just so, so pretty. And this, um, like I said, is going to be a cushion cover. And I had originally thought, well, I might just leave it as it is, but I just think that robin would sit perfectly there. It's so I'm perfect just, size, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. yeah. And we're going to use um, the multi-surface to paint. So we're going to get it stamped on. Um, Any time you want to um, stop, Hayley, just say, okay. and we can stop um, midway through. Right, I'm stamping this one with um, the midnight blue. So it's, it's not black and it's, it's really deep blue, like an indigo blue. I'm hoping this is going to show up. Um, and I'm hoping my ink pad is new enough to put plenty of pigment on because you have to be sure that you've got a new one when you're wanting to define the line. If it's mm -hmm. starting to get a bit old, you know, save that for perhaps paperwork and use the new ones for your fabric. That's a good point. And I want it to look like it's hanging from, from there and get it fairly centred. So down it goes. And I've, I say it every time, but I'll just repeat in case people are new to it. When you've got a large stamp uh, like this one, you need to take extra care with the middle and put a little bit more pressure on the middle because quite often, if you don't, you can have really lovely crisp outside and a slightly pale or, or a lighter impression on the middle. So make sure the center gets a really good press. Okay, now this hasn't worked because I haven't got enough ink. So plan B is I'm going in with my ultramarine. So this should be a juicier one. We, we kind of thought this when we got it out that it wouldn't do. Um, but it also goes to show that you, you know, if you do an impression, we can see a little bit, doesn't matter if you go over the top and you see uh, two lines. In fact, the six o'clock show last night, we had two, three, four lines showing. So that looks a bit more juicy. So this one should be a little bit more successful. And I'm going to try and line it up a little bit over what I've just done. So. Down it goes again. Good 
press. Right, that's better. Oh, there you go. Now, what I can do is I can heat set it now. Okay. If I well, if I heat, I'm not going to. I'm just saying if oh, I I could. Yes. If I heat set it, that would stay exactly as it is now. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. But because I want to um, just ham the colour up a little. Yeah. I'm going to do it a, do a spritz, but I'm going to immediately um, dry. Now, can you see the colour? Oh yes, yeah. Change. Gosh, doesn't that? Yeah. But I don't want it to spread, which so is what we did last. it quickly. Yeah, with the heat. which is what we did last night. We we wanted the spread. So, the um, the Versacraft stamping inks they're so versatile for so many different techniques. Mm. You know, um, dry onto dry, dry onto wet, dry onto dry spritz and immediately dry, dry onto dry spritz and leave it for, for as long as it takes to dry. This, uh, every, every drying effect All is the different completely combinations, different. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I have prepared a piece of fabric. In fact, this is one that we painted last night at, I think we did this at six o'clock. Um, and the way we can um, use fabric and cut out without it fraying is to treat it with um, PVA and water mix. So in, in my jam jar that goes everywhere with me <laughs> is my milky solution, which in fact is about 50% PVA, 50% water mixed up together. Um, it doesn't matter if your proportions are slightly different, if you've got a little bit more PVA or, or more water, it will, the, the technique will still work. Um, and what I've done is the piece of fabric we did last night, I've painted that solution over the fabric and it sort of stiffens it and it means that you're not going to get any fraying ah, at clever. all. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I've got a little poinsettia that's come off one of the stamps um, and I'm going to stamp it onto the red where it's had the PVA we'll do about three I think um, again I could spritz this if I wanted to intensify the colour but I think against the red it's fine um, I'm just going to very, very quick blast and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand it over to Mel and ask her to snip round. I don't need all the little fiddly bits, Mel, I just need the petals, please, if you wouldn't mind. But these then become the, the little elements that you have here. Fabulous. So, while I'm doing some painting, if she could um, do that for me, that would be marvellous, thank you. So, while that's being done... oh. What I do need to do, right, where I'm going to put my poinsettia, because Mel's going to cut the petals and not the decorative parts, I'm going to stamp in the poinsettia so that actually I get it with the decorative bits actually on the surface, if you get my drift. It will make sense when it all gets compiled together. So, so my little red poinsettia is going to sit on top of here, so I will be able to see the little um, twiddly bits. And then we'll have a third one sitting on the top. So, lovely. So that's that job done. Um, now, painting. We're going to use... Um, oh, I do need to set that because that will um, move with water. We're going to use um, just two of the colours. We're going to use the aubergine dazzle and the white. And the white only. We've got the white that I've already used, so that's picking up that there. And we think the aubergine will pick up on these sort of um, dark blues. Um, and I'm going to use a technique where I'm going to actually probably paint more of the background behind the robin, robin than I am actually the robin. Um, because the fabric is also a colour. So you don't actually have to colour everything to add more colour to it. Again, it will make sense once I start going look now Kathy we just had a question come through asking yeah. about your stamp your little stamp press that you were using Susan was asking about yes. that this one um, yes yeah what is it she, I think she well, wants to get one it's a stamping platform with foam feet and right a, a lot of people like to um, stamp with the what do you call those ones the the stamp here? presses I oh, think the stamp those press, ones are. Yeah, yeah. which is all well and good however if you've got fabric 
you can't do that because the fabric sort of gets all bunched up by the, the yeah. hinge and sort of goes over the top and makes it too thick. You can if you've obviously got a tiny little piece of fabric that fits inside the, the dimensions of your platform, you could use that. But in this instance, it would be impossible to do. Mm -hmm. So um, the reason we use this is re really for positioning. You can, you can lay it, you can look, does that, does that fit my composition no I'll move it around and then you've got sort of wiggle room particularly if you're doing um, uh, repeat impressions which we did last night at the six with the with the um, partridge we kept repeating and mm -hmm. repeating Definitely. so you need to be able to see through it so you can see your lines below and you need, need to be able to line things up and as you go down you've got this maneuverability with the foam pads wonderful before yeah. you make so Lovely. I mean uh, since we started using this I pretty well don't use anything else other than that so. I don't know as we've got those on her Chandler's website but if you get in contact with the girls I'm sure they'll be able to help you get one of those located right so we're all completely dry we've got the poinsettia and uh, actually the poinsettia has come out a bit deeper I've pro probably put a little bit more um, ink on that or it might be the fact that I've done a little bit of a spritz it has spread a bit but either way we're good to go um, now you need a you need a dry brush but the dry brush has to have visited the water because if you go straight from um you know straight from your your stash to your paint it can be a little bit like painting with glue and you don't get the spread so you want a little bit of water you you want to sort of get some water on your brush and almost take it off again before you apply your paint because we want it to to move so when i say i want to paint the background now, if you're not sure, say your line image isn't very um, strong, get your reference, whether that reference be the picture or the acetate sheet. You know, you can have it next to you, so you're, you're cross-referencing what's the background and actually where all the twiddly bits um, are. So I, I know that this robin is sitting on, like, a little floral branch, and I'm using dry pigment in these really dark bits and what I'm doing is I'm sort of stroking the fabric if I had lots of water on then I put my brush on it would go psh, and, yes, and seep yeah. and spread and blend and I, that's not what I'm trying to achieve I'm trying to I'm trying to maintain a little bit of control over what I'm doing so I'm just sort of smudging it almost and you can see the area that you're working on is almost bringing that rob into the foreground exactly again. Um, if you accidentally put a, a little bit too much on and you think, oh my gosh, it's, it's too heavy, just use your finger to draw the pigment round so you're sort of spreading it with your finger. Um, I, I am going to do some water painting as well, but I just want to get these dark bits in first so we can see where we're going with it. And of course, there's a lot of detail here. Don't be afraid to sometimes lose some of the detail. You don't necessarily have to keep everything, um, especially if it's really, really fine. So again, with my finger, just going to spread a, li a little bit. So it's going to be quite heavy and intense down here. And I also want... Thank you, Mel. Um, I also want to get some round this poinsettia. Can you see, it, I mean, I've hardly put any paint on at all, but immediately, just by edging, it's bringing it forward. And actually, this is one of my favourite, favourite techniques, is not to paint the subject, but to paint the background. It's so very effective. Yeah, I do, it, I do it a lot. Works well. And of course, I, the beauty is anybody that's watching, um, Mel is going on to fabric, but the beauty of these paints, you can, and also the ink that's been laid down with the design, the heat set, which means that you can actually wash what you're creating with these. Right, so, so that's how I would do the dry work. Now, if I want to add water, so let's get some water. Can we, can we see how much water I'm adding to... There we go, we got it. There. Right, so that's actually quite wet. So, obviously, that's going to bleed... Don't be frightened about paint bleeding. If it goes over a line, it's no different, really, than it going over a line um, if it was on paper. But you can still control it. I ideally don't want it to bleed that way. So, again, with my finger, I can encourage the water to go elsewhere. 
and of course this is paler than when you're using it neat and doing this technique means you can maintain some of the detail because the detail you'll still be able to see through so really there's two techniques going on here you can use one or the other or mix the two up together but you can see it's wet but it doesn't look like it's um, well it is bleeding but not bleeding in a negative way mm -hmm. and then we'll come around the other side start adding some darker areas here again I want to encourage the spread away from the robin to the background you've still got a lot of control with this even though you're you using the, the water yes you have when you first start um, you know, when Mel and I used to do the shows and we used to do the little make and takes, which you did one, didn't you? I did indeed. Um, I enjoyed every minute of a it. A long, long time I was time reminiscing ago. about the little butterflies. And I was yeah. chatting yesterday when the, they were getting everything set up. And it was almost like I felt like a, a kind of a, a proud friend, I'd like to call myself, because you, you, the company has developed so much since those initial first days with us here at Achanda. And it's just lovely to see how everything's blossomed. Well, we have. But actually, if you look at this, the principles are all the exactly, same. Exactly, yes, It has yeah. changed. But in, in so many ways, it hasn't. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, here I'm putting even less and less. My, my brush has got hardly any paint on it because I'm, I'm going from dark to mid to hardly anything. Um, so so your, your eye will come to the, the darker parts yes. and then spread out. Looks and now we've got a lovely, gorgeous little um, bird box. I love this bird box. Um, I actually want to define that a oh, little yes, bit too. Oh, yes, there it is, yeah. I mean, that just on its own. If you just stamp that on a little card, a little miniature card, it would be so pretty. Very cute. How am I doing for time, Hayley? Have I... um, you've got about 15 minutes right, left. Right, lovely. Thank you. So we've just edged that a little bit. Again, I want to, want to keep it fairly light. Right, I, I'm just adding more and more. To it. This is one colour only. But um, you can, you can, although it be one colour, you can still get the other colours coming through from underneath. So there's so much more going on. Um, this is really softening now as it's bleeding and it's spreading. Fabulous, yeah. So what you could do is, is if I've got, when I'm working at home, yeah. I have a paintbrush in one hand and I have my hair dry or, or craft um, heat tool in the other. I'm painting or, or stamping, um, spritzing, drying painting, drying, painting, drying, and it's sort of like this layer building up process um, to achieve Looks the amazing. finished piece. Right, having said, Hayley, that I wasn't going to do another colour, <laughs> because, I'm, well, because <laughs> these red poinsettia are going to be coming in as 3D, okay. I'm thinking, do you know, I'm just going to buff a little bit of red so there's a, a, a connection from yes. one piece yeah, to it's another. Yeah, kind of bridging the gap between the two. Yeah, yeah okay. so I've got Makes hardly sense. any pigment because I don't want to put it on and think, oh, I've put too much. I'd rather go slowly. Um, so this one is that beautiful red, isn't it? Yeah, this is the strawberry fire. It's Lovely. a beautiful, uh, like a vermilion red. Mm. So can you see now the two, two bits are, are connecting? Yes. Yeah. Um, and... I mean, I don't want to finish the show without having put my white on, so I don't want to get to a point where I haven't done that because that's, that's going to be the problem at all. Right. Having done the background, I am just putting a little bit just at the bottom and uh, just under here, but a shade, so it looks like he's perched or she's perched. And again, that just that little accent of colour <laughs> makes a difference. And then I'm actually going to put a little bit on top of the head as well because I've got dark here. And it the outside fades, I can afford to put a little bit of um, darkness at the top. If I put dark on here now, you wouldn't get the contrast between the two. So that's why I'm sort of cherry picking where I'm putting it. Right, well, that's enough for now. I, I would take it a little bit further, but I want to get the white in. OK. Um, so. He has. If you look at a robin, they have like this sort of white edge and again I'm building it up this is with again draw a fairly dry brush it has visited the water so the paint will flow a little bit but not very much um, and I really want to get the white on here this is like a it's it, it's almost like he's on a bow of a tree but it's a it's a bit of a fabric bow so that's how I see it anyway
I, I think with um, you know these sort of illustrative stamps, you you see in it what you want to see in it. It's a good point, yeah. But that's art in general, isn't, isn't it? Isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So I need definitely need more intensity here. And if you if you don't want to commit to a, uh, you know a piece like this, just get a little tiny bit and practice on a tiny bit, and then just keep practicing, keep going until you feel confident to build yourself up to um, a bigger piece. Really, just make a difference, especially when you put that little dot on the eye there and on yeah. the beak. And we'll add a bit more white coming in here, I think. And what I can do, I mean, I can I can mix the white with the red. Actually, no, I don't like that colour. But you could do it. Say I wanted it to go halfway between. I could mix the colour on my palette. Um, and I think I'm going to actually dilute some white as well. Now, within each of the sets of paints <coughs> excuse me, that we've been talking about, um, you've got the sparkle in there. Can you use the sparkle on the fabric as well? Yes. If I've got time, I'm going to do that, oh, which okay. I don't think I will. But it's, it really it's is your... It's about eight and a half minutes. Oh, have I? Lovely. I... I really would like to do a bit more painting, but I'll get the sparkle on and I can always do a bit of painting on top and then re-sparkle. Okay. So, although it is your final coat, you can, um, you can carry on painting. Say you think, well, actually, I haven't put enough, enough white on or I want to put a little bit more red on the, on the breast um, and you've already sparkled, you can put it on, on again, just reapply the sparkle as your, as your final coat. And the sparkle in the pots um, looks quite pale. That's the binder. Um, and when the binders um, dry, you literally get pure sparkle sitting on, on the top. Um, so the plan was to put these, so I would glue these on, or, you know, stitch them on if you wanted to. And they, that little bit of red that you've added to the robin now really does tie it all in, doesn't it? Because they, they look a part of it now, whereas they, they, they'd looked a part of it before, but they stood out a little bit too much, but that balance of that red has, has toned it down. Yes, and, and I would get, as, exactly as I've done with the robin, I'd get tone on the poinsettia as well, maybe some lights and darks, mm -hmm. um, and maybe a, a touch of deeper red here and there. Let's put a little bit on perhaps round, round the middle. It's also brought out the little kind of snowflakes around the edges yes, as well. Yes, it has. So, I mean, obviously these, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I've not attached them or anything, um, or I would paint them aside, but I just wanted you to see how you would build up this colour. I want even more red. Slowly, slowly, layer, layers, build it up. Sometimes walk away from it, leave mm -hmm. it for a while, come back and have another look. But he's really coming together, isn't he? he looks amazing. Um, how, mu how much time have I got? Probably about um, six minutes. All oh, right, okay. So I don't need to put my spot. You know what I'm like, Mel. Yeah, we're panicking. Run out of time. Oh no! I don't want to run out of time because I always, I always get to the end of the show. I, I, I only need about three seconds to say oh, goodbye. I, I, <laughs> I'm enjoying myself. I always feel that I go away and there's, I think, well, I didn't show that and I didn't put that in. Oh. And, you know, I just feel I, I like to share all the information so everybody can go away. And Do you do anything like Facebook Lives or videos that people can um, watch you on? No, we don't do Facebook Live okay. um, because... Well, you haven't got the signal for it, oh, basically. See, yes, that's the main yeah, thing. Yeah, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I live at the very end of a long, single li copper line, and I, it just wouldn't happen. Okay. I have trouble keeping contact with Mel, don't I? <laughs> yeah. So. I've, I've added a little bit of depth and tone to the inside of the poinsettia, um, and I want to get a little bit of red down on these baubles as well. Red and white, I think, would look nice down here. So this red is sort of following through. I actually wouldn't have chosen red to do on this piece, but Mel chose it, and it's it's a lovely choice, I think. Yeah, you were, actually. Oh, yeah. I see. Yes. Nice combination, yeah. She was mother of the bride, and she was wearing um, purple and red. Isn't there a poem about wearing purple and red? I don't know. It's I'm sure there is. <laughs> I'm trying to think what it is now. It's, it's one of these... That, I think it's one of those kind of poems that gives you the inspiration to just be whoever you want to be and don't care. Um, that just reminded me of this, this week when Janice was on doing a show and she got a, a song in her mind and she was trying to 
remembered the song. I've never laughed so much in my life. She was trying to remember what the song was. I don't know. Did you hear about that? No. It was hilarious. And she kept trying to sing it. She, kept, she couldn't get the words right. I just... It was, it was priceless. It was a fabulous poem. Do, do check it out. Em Emily's looked on the internet. She's chuckling away to herself. It's by a lady called Jenny Joseph, and it starts off. That we're, uh, how did the first couple of lines go? When I am an old woman, I shall wear purple with a red hat that doesn't go and doesn't suit me. And it's basically just saying, I'm just going to do what I like. I shan't tell you what she does with a pension, but you have to look yeah. at the poem to see what she's doing. She, that's my kind of woman. <laughs> that's it, yes. Um, yeah, so uh, some crystals on there would look lovely, some more crystals going round the edge. Um, and then I think I might actually put, I don't know if that's dry or not, but I'm going to put, like, snow, little snowdrops. Can you, can you see this white? This is my, you know, if I could, you know, tell anybody anything, it's the white. Just yes, white it does make dots. the difference. It's, it literally illuminates, doesn't it? Even yeah. these little tiny dots, it really does lift it out. White lines, white highlights. Yeah. It's, it's just so pretty. Now, just to give you a little bit of a time check, you've got about two minutes, Kathy. Yeah. I mean, I, I think you can see pretty well what I've done is where I was headed with this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a bit speed painting, but um, you get the idea. And then put this stitched up into a into a cushion or a centerpiece for yes. your your Christmas table. That's you know, a really putting good point, some, yeah. you know, some um, like nice satsumas on it or Ooh, something. Yes. You know, I mean, I, the sort of thing I would do is actually pick the the orange of the satsuma and colour a bit of orange. Clever all idea. Tied in yes. and was yeah. really pretty. But Absolutely yeah, gorgeous. I would just literally carry on doing more of the same. I would also get a little bit of dark. Um, I probably use. I don't think it's on the show, but I'd use a bit of a darker colour just to um, do the Could eye. Could you use something like the aubergine that you were using earlier on that's got that purple tone, or does it um, need to step away from that? Well, I'm using the aubergine. Um, no, but you're saying going for the darker colour. Uh, yeah, I think for, for an eye, it kind of needs to be the darkest. Right. You could do, but yeah. I think to, to get it looking really nice, the, yes. look, the eye just needs that little bit darker than yes, the rest. Yeah, but yeah, right, you yeah. certainly could use the aubergine on this ultramarine um, stamp for sure and that's all, all it needs oh. but I mean when I get home oh I haven't done the, have I got time for sparkle we've only got 40 seconds oh well I'll imagine the sparkle yeah you basically put it in your palette the same dilute it down with water and and paint it over the piece let the binder dry and you're left with the sparkle sitting on the I top. love that thank you so much Kathy what a fabulous day we've had with Cathy. Thank you for all your inspiration. Mel as well, thank you Pleasure. as well, because you're helping us with all these beautiful products and putting everything together. So, Can I just say thank you to all our ladies that are our um, design can. team. Thank you, girls. Thank we you, really appreciate yeah. all your hard work. We definitely do. Thank you. Mm -hmm.